Good morning. Morning. Hi, Tom. How you doing, John? Good. Thanks for coming. Sure. I'm going to stop my video, but I didn't want to just be a black screen. <laughs> it's funny when you're at a very small meeting and, you know, everybody's got their screen on black. It's like, what the heck? I agree. I experienced that. Well, I guess I'll leave it on for now, too. I was worried I'd be too whitewashed with the light in my room. Well, here comes John Airstuck. He's a member of the ZBA and he's out on the West Coast. Oh, okay. Um, is it comfortable for you if I leave the video on? Fine. Oh, thanks, okay. Morning, John. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> What's Good. that behind you? A mirror or a? Oh, you know that is kind of weird, isn't it? I'm in a. Oh, there you go. I'm just in a bed and breakfast. Yeah, if I just kind of sit in the right place, I'll block that mirror over the bureau. You I have no control right of my there. Do not kind move the Operation here today. <laughs> oh. I just talked to Jeff a minute ago. He's um, about to sign on, so that's okay. good. Okay. Okay. Well, nothing can, nothing um, can go bad today for me. I'm uh, as of yesterday. I have uh, the third of my three daughters all happily married. So, <laughs> so I'm I'm on top of the world. <laughs> that's the goal, right? <laughs> <laughs> and there's Tom. Hi, Tom. <clears throat> Good morning, John. How are you? I am exceedingly Congratulations. Thank, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> How are things back on the home front? I've been out of touch with uh, with Shootsbury and the general area recently. Hot it's and humid. And hot and humid. Yeah. And um you know, we had four and a half inches of rain the other day. I I've been following it a little bit on yeah on the weather reports. It's like it sounds <laughs> a little bit wretched. <laughs> Too much of a good thing, right? <laughs> well, it's hot, and then you know you can't have the windows open because the rain is <laughs> just. Uh, every time I open the windows, I'd look at the map. Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to rain. Oh my God, it's raining. <laughs> yeah, out here it's that we're it's hot as hell. Uh, yeah. But it's that dry heat is just a whole different kind of a phenomenon. So you can deal with it a lot, a lot more easily, you know, right. than when you have that high humidity. Boy, it makes all the difference. <clears throat> For the wedding yesterday, it happened at four o'clock, which was, you know, the highest temperature of the day. And it was, uh, it was a hundred. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But as the evening settled in, the Mount Hood's in the background, it's like, man. It was ideal. Just Are you, uh, Portland. Uh, uh, we're a little bit uh, east of Portland. We're yep. in a place called Hood Hood River. Okay, um, so Mount Hood is right. Columbia there. Gorge. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was once out in Walla Walla, Washington. Oh, I yeah. have a similar climate. Yeah. It's so hot, but it was tolerable. It was exactly. Yeah. yeah, it makes, makes a big difference. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> and there comes Mr. Lacey. <clears throat> Are we expecting someone from... Jim Hawkins office as well or is yeah okay Jim's, Jim's on vacation but he was going to send his um uh alternate building inspector uh, I think okay. it's Jeff Goodgen I okay. have met him um mm -hmm. yeah is he is he he's not a Shutesbury resident though is he no yeah I, I there no. speaking of the devil 
<laughs> Jeff, not sure if um, the homeowners will come or not. I thought they might. Morning, Jeff. Hey there, everybody. Tom. John, John. Hey. Yep. Good morning, Jeff. John with an H. John, hold the H. Hold the H. <laughs> never had one, never will. And these should be really nice if we could kind of differentiate that when we say them, you know, so we know which one we're talking about, but it doesn't work that way. John versus John. John. <laughs> well, you can call me Johan if you want, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> John Mon. I've called John you lots Mon. of things over the years. <laughs> oh, I, oh, believe me, I know. <laughs> and I deserved every one of them. John Boy. Yep. <laughs> Hmm. I guess I can start the meeting. Um, in fact, we've got a, a few other pieces of unanticipated business. Um, why don't I open the meeting? Meeting is open at 11.05. Well, that depends. Uh, Jeff Lacey is going to take the minutes for us. Got it. Thanks, Jeff. Here's the building inspector coming in now. <laughs> Hi, Jeff, can you hear us? So I'll, um, I'll say something about the situation that we're in, which is um, at, uh, we're here initially to talk about 17 Leverett Road, where um, an addition has been added on to a uh, pre-existing non-conforming um, single family home. The addition is uh, pretty good sized and, um, I saw it going up, um, you know, watched as they poured the foundation, but I was not a member of the ZBA and didn't feel like it was <laughs> my problem. So I, I never said anything about it, but now here I am on the ZBA and a question was asked of me what that was. So I did a little research and found that um, a building permit um, was issued um, for the addition from uh, Franklin County uh, Regional Inspection Services, um, apparently issued in error because um, this never came to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a site plan review, uh, which it which it would have um, should have. Uh, so that's sort of a um, highlight of where we're at, I guess what I want to get done at this meeting is try to divide, define a process that we can enter um, to go forward and decide how to get a site plan review for this thing. And then uh, a bigger question, um, and maybe for another meeting uh, with Jim Hawkins present, is to determine an ongoing process between the ZBA and FERCOG so that we don't um, Let's say we prevent this from happening again. How about that? Um, I was. Yeah, hoping... our, our zoning has been, I guess, destroyed, described by, by Jim, Jim Hawkins in the past as being a, a, a bit complex and somewhat unusual in a number of areas. Um, but to me, that should just tell them that when a uh, Shootsbury building permit is applied for, you need to really check it because it's there's lots of ins and outs. Um, or at least um, call somebody on the planning or zoning board. Um, 
so anyway, Shrewsbury should be a, a red flag that you yep. be careful. You need to check. Yep. Yep. That, that that said, has has this happened before? In and in, in in recent, oh, it has recently happened. Yeah. No. Okay. Yep. And you know, building inspectors have a lot, especially ones like FERCOG, where they're dealing with multiple towns. The building code is pretty standard across the state, but the zoning is different from every from town to town. Um, if you were just Shootsbury's building inspector, which I wish John was, um, <laughs> he he just know the zoning for the, for the town, and that's all he worried about. But these guys have I don't know fourteen towns or something. Seventeen, all different. I think seventeen towns. Yeah. Wow. So things like this are going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I think the building inspector office should just recognize the oversight and um, stop the project until a site plan review has been completed. Yeah, so and I have I have a little note to myself here that I'm not code enforcement um, in this meeting. Uh, <laughs> and I have to keep reminding myself of that because I did that for 12 years for a neighboring community. Um, yeah, I... I mean, there are there are some. Um, I, I, you know, I've not seen a a, a um, plot plan for this project, so I I don't know, you know, whether one was submitted. What I've seen online is in the application for the building permit, um, you know, floor plans and elevations, um, but and a and even um, another permit for solar on the site, but I've, I don't know, you know, what setbacks are. Um, I, I went to the assessor's um, GIS system and, you know, pulled a measurement from the front property line to the house currently. And it's, looks like it's, uh, Fourteen feet. Fourteen feet from the back. Is, is, is that from the road? No, no, no. That's from the property line. I is, built in the same location as an existing garage. Oh, hi, Jeff. Standing of the the project, yeah. so it's not a new setback dimension. It's where the building already was. Well, now it starts getting a little complicated because. Um, the town center has a 20 foot front setback and yet our zoning says for accessory apartments, the, the apartment needs to, um, all right. It says the principal one family dwelling, including the accessory apartment must satisfy all side and rear setback requirements it conspicuously leaves out the front hmm. and i think we did that just knowing how many houses were so close to the road and you know not making them go through a um some kind of a dimensional variance process every time so right. we just left out the front so it's the side in the rear that that are are really applicable here, I believe. So that sounds like it might be a non-issue for us. The only other thing that I <laughs> spotted in my um, quick research on this, on the from the assessor's map and from our dimensional table, is the um, frontage um, required. That doesn't seem to vary in the town center district. It's two hundred and fifty feet. Am I right about that? Frontage is also left out. Uh, it says the lot must have an area of forty-five thousand square feet, so that's an that's a little over an acre. Um, but it says nothing about frontage. Okay. So uh, the the fact that there's already something there on a non-conforming lot that that um, that's a free that's a free spin, I guess. And we do have do have an acre worth of land here. Um, I don't have that. Uh, card up I, in front of me i, I think, think it's pretty I think close to, yeah, yeah it goes way back mm -hmm. right 
So they probably do. And again, the reason we wrote this in 2008 was because so many of the houses were built without 250 feet of frontage. Sure. The, the former frontage used to be 150, and then it was maybe something less or nothing. And we didn't want to make, so so many houses are like that. We didn't want to put them through the ringer uh, for frontage. We, right. we just felt the side and the rear were important setbacks, but that okay. was it. Makes sense. I didn't check any of that, but um, I'm not sure. Um, Jeff Goodgen, do you know, was a was a site plan um, part of the application process here? Did they, is there one in the um, electronic file? There is not one, no, it should have had one. Oh, so that, yeah, that was an oversight as well, I guess. Yeah, um, because it was being built on the same footprint as it was, so no, site plan was submitted for it okay okay but that doesn't obviate the need for a site plan review going forward that's our conversation about going forward yeah yeah there's one one, one more thing you know as we're talking about actual dimensions and so forth what what are we talking about in terms of height are there any issues there with the um i don't think zoning doesn't address building. height um and it would be a um uh, building code thing I, it doesn't it doesn't look like it's more than 32 feet high. Can you verify that, Jeff Goodgen? Um it, um yeah, it doesn't look to be over any elevation or height requirement. It's, I mean their um their second floor is actually, you know, got some roof pitch involved in it. So um they haven't gone up two full floors on a and a roof on top of that there that that space upstairs looks like it's you know no. uh, yeah they're, it's not the clearest set of plans i've seen got that, got that too <laughs> the, i was a, a little um a little perplexed that it seems like the homeowner is in the business am i right about that uh it looks to be i'm not actually the one that did the plan review on this okay um, I ended up issuing my name's on the permit. I issued it because it was in our system is ready to issue. I got gotcha. you. Did not do the plan review. Um, I agree there should have been more question questions on this. Um, I don't know if Jim has gone out and put a stop work mm -hmm. order on this. I think he may have. Um, but we can pause, get them to stop the project while we do the site plan review. Well, you guys do the site plan review. Okay. I mean, I I hate to do that to someone because I've I've um been the recipient of that process, but I, I you know I think that's probably the cleanest way forward here. I, I would say there was definitely an oversight on our part. And having them pause for a bit, will you do the site plan review would be good. Um, it looks like they will meet most requirements, like the setbacks, just because it was a pre-existing location. Sure. Um, I don't know about uh, what, I know there are a couple of decks on that. I don't know that any of them are encroaching more than they used to. Good. I would have to. Well, will you, um, uh, I guess, do us the favor of finding out where Jim is at with this? I think that he he alluded to a, a message that he sent to the homeowner, but I he didn't tell me what he sent and he didn't copy me on anything. Um, so I don't know, you know, where he's left them in terms of uh, stopping work or how to go forward. He, he He wanted to know if it was okay if he gave her my cell phone number so she could call me about the process. But... Mm -hmm. um, I, well, he gave me the direction that we can rescind um, the permit for now so you guys can perform what should have clearly been done already. And we go from there. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I will and... contact them and explain that to them what we're doing and why we're doing it. Okay, great. Um, any any other uh, questions from members of the board? 
Uh, well, just a, just a note, um, I've been following the housing bond bill in the legislature because um, there's something in there we actually wrote for Shootsbury regarding accessory uh, members of ZBAs and planning boards, actually just planning boards. But while reading through it, 177 pages, I found uh, that they they haven't uh, they've inserted a definition of accessory apartments and also a new sort of exemption for accessory apartments. Um, this, I believe, is solidly in the housing bond bill and will pass uh, quite shortly um, by the end of the month. So I sent it to John and John. Um, for your information over email this morning. But if this passes, this controls to the extent that it conflicts with our local Shootsbury zoning bylaw. I mean, one conflict here is that, um, you know, we have an 800 foot limit. The limit in here is half, it's either half the gross area of the principal dwelling or 900 square feet, whichever is smaller. So, um, that that could effectively increase our 800 feet to 900 feet. And then it also says you can't require occupancy by an owner of one of the units. So that's in our bylaw. So we can't do that anymore. So we, as we do this, we have to bear in mind this legislation and make sure we don't run mm -hmm. afoul of it because I'm positive it's gonna pass. <clears throat> Is all is all um, legislation retroactive now, as we saw with the Supreme Court recently? <laughs> you know, if if we're right in the middle of, yeah, I mean, with the Supreme Court, they were right in the middle of sentencing, and um, too bad they didn't sentence earlier. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, if you're in the middle of a process and a law changes, um, you have to you have to you have to adjust with it. Okay. At, at the moment, I believe I don't think there's any grace period so yeah i mean maybe the home ownership piece affects us we we don't know about that i mean i think they the homeowners live live there now and you know we don't know what their future plans are but um the the piece that might have some effect is about the size of the um the unit i don't i think it looked like it already was less than 800 feet do you know that I Jeff Goodgen? I did quick math on that just before the meeting. And I came up including the mudroom area of 840 square feet to the outside in this year, the bylaws say 800 square feet of floor area. So I would argue that it's right on the edge, if not within. Yeah, okay. Once you get rid of exterior walls and partitions and such. Yeah, yeah, they, um, let's see. Floor, floor area. They talk about heated, I believe. Um, in the I, new, I, in the new bylaw, in the new state um, housing bill. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't include decks or anything. That was just uh, making the square. At is the I didn't include second floor, so they may be over it. Oh, I, okay. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah, but but that's why we have site plan review so we can look Hopefully at all these standards that stuff then, right. and assess the project against the standards. And you know there are a few other um, things in there that are a little bit soft and fuzzy, like it's architecturally compatible with the principal structure and this and that. And uh, you can require an extra parking place. Um, Does that currently have uh, three three spaces? That I, lot. Yeah. I don't know what it has. Um, yeah, it's hard to tell because it's, um, you know, it's still under construction. So the it's not landscaped in the front or anything. And and construction vehicles come and go and park, park wherever they, you know, have direct access to the front door. So yeah. there's so no longer yeah. account. But anyway, this is what we do during our site plan review. So we don't have to sweat every little detail now. And yeah, that's right. So anyway, this will be coming forward. That sounds great. Um, Jeff Goodgen, thank you. If there aren't any other questions, I think we can 
let you off the hook here and we'll go on to some unanticipated business? So the, so the FERCOG folks will will rescind or suspend this permit and then instruct the applicant to come to us for site plan review. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank you very much. I will do. That. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Uh, what else she got on her agenda here? Um, Carrie did provide an agenda to me. ZBA vacancy discussion. Um, I talked to Nathan Murphy about that for a few minutes about possibly getting someone from the um, current planning board to come over much the way you had previously, Jeff, member of two boards. Um, so we don't meet that often. It's not that heavy a lift. Um, he thought that there might be some interest. Uh, so that's to be continued. Did, did you give any further thought to contacting Tom Williams? No. Um, how, I mean, how would you feel about that? I mean, he's a, he's a hundred percent retired and I don't, I don't know why he would, you know, he's already come out of retirement and served on the ZBA once um, when Chuck was still chair. I think if I myself was retired and moved away from Shutesbury, how would I receive that? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> There's no way. That that describes me, and I'm I'm sitting here on your screen right now. For I say. appreciate that. That's because you feel, <laughs> you feel so bad for. <laughs> where where does moved away mean for for Williams? I mean, he lives down on the Cape. Ah, okay. He comes back. I see him at the AC every now and then. Um, I see him downtown sometimes. I, yeah. I think he has continuing affinity for Shutesbury, and nobody was. A, he was just such a great member. He he knew our zoning inside and out. Um, he was great at meetings. Very authoritative. Um, when I first and so even keeled, you know. I mean, yeah. I, he, he cases was would come in, and I'd be like, absolutely yeah. not. And he would he would find a way, you know. <laughs> he was the chair of the planning board when it approved the old peach orchard subdivision. Yeah, was I, I was a, I was the clerk of the planning board when that went through. Oh. Yep. Yeah. I don't know um, him at all. How, how how old a guy is he? Oh, he's mid eighties, I think. Okay. Okay. That old, really? Nah. You don't think so? Well, I don't know, John. If 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 I could reel him in, would you mind? I mean, you can have a conversation with him. That's fine. Let, let me see what I can do. It's always fun to talk to him, anyway. All right. All right. Um, unanticipated business. I have three things here. One of them is six. Kinder Lane, so that's down off of Old Egypt Road um, by the lake, across from the beach. Um, it's a home that was previously Howard Kinder's house. It is now owned by a woman named Edith Hunsberger. She sent an email to the planning board, which the planning board forwarded on to Carrie, which Carrie forwarded on to me. Um, she wanted to know about possibility for making the um, looks like pre-existing apartment in the basement um, a legal accessory apartment. And I did a quick review mm -hmm. of the um, assessor's information on that and, you know, snapped a few dimensions. Um, she has a um, undersized lot. Let's see, it's 15,000 square feet. Um, from my memory. So it would need to be, you know, 40,000 square feet. She's, she doesn't have that. And she also doesn't have any of the setbacks um, side or rear. So um, I sent her an email and I said, I don't think this is likely something that um, the, the ZBA would approve. And I haven't heard back from her. The that, second, that, yeah, that, that email should somewhere go into our our records of what we've done. 
you know, e even if it was just a, a, I don't know, it was, wasn't an official action of the ZBA. It was education and guidance yep. Um, yep. kind of thing, but you should probably hang on to that just for, for the record in case say she goes ahead and does it anyway, or does it illegally. Then I mean, it's already done as far as I know. I look like it. <laughs> oh, you think it's already in there? Oh yeah. I th think Howard did it. Ah. Does there but, does there need to be official action taken today? Is that is that a, no, an option? No. I am not the code enforcement officer. That mm -hmm. is what my little note says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh so you know, I don't know. I just she asked a specific question and I answered that question. Um didn't get any deeper than that. Um <coughs> Yes, I agree that that yeah. should be stored somewhere. And yeah. I I talked to Carrie before she left about our records. You know, everything's in paper still. The town hasn't digitized anything. They haven't explored any grants for digitizing anything. It's just they stay in that drawer until the drawer is full, and then they go over to the old town hall and molder. And um, yeah, electronic communications, those are all you know, part of our records. And uh, there's not really a system that's been addressed for how we hold on to those. I have them organized in folders on my laptop, but, you know, uh, that's where they are. The town, as far as I know, doesn't have any sort of electronic storage for anything. Hmm. The second case is... Um, now that we spotted this thing on Leverett Road, Jim has deluged me with a couple of other things because he realizes, oh, wow, they have got their eyes open. One is that 59 Shore Drive. Um, it's a, There's an existing cottage on this property, which they're proposing to tear down, and they have um, applied for a building permit. I'm not sure if Jim has denied this permit or not, but uh, the plans are available on the FERCOG website. I looked at them. Kuhn Riddle designed a great big house to go on this little, you know, sort of postage stamp piece of property. I'm not sure about the setbacks. Um, it's 25 feet from the lake, which I see is, is you know, one of the items that we're looking at, but they have a hundred feet of frontage, but from what you said, Jeff, it doesn't matter what the frontage is. We don't look at that. Well, wait a minute. Now, this is a different um, different property. This well, it's a different case too because it's not accessory apartments. It's it just is. tear down a tear down a cottage and replace it with a year-round residence. Right. So frontage, lot size, setbacks, all matter. That doesn't. They can't do it then. The answer is no. Well, they they might be able to do it, but it could require a special permit from us, not just a okay. building permit. Right. So maybe um, that's what he he's not good about you know hitting reply all or sharing <laughs> with anyone else when he communicates. So I don't I don't know what's transpired between him and the owners of this place. I guess that's part of the conversation about how can well, we work together. Well, in, in our in our zoning bylaw, yeah, we have pictures. There, there's all these scenarios that we have yeah. to go through. So, okay. You know, is it going to be higher? Is it going to be closer to the side? Does it, you know, all this stuff. And some Oh, of it's these, way higher. It's a two it's a two-story house. <laughs> right, but is it going to be higher than than it was? Um, oh yeah, yeah, no what it is now is like literally a flat-roofed cottage. Yeah. It looks like an ice cream stand, you know? Right. So so what what Hawkins office has to do is go through himself, go through these scenarios. Well, he, he could flip it to us if he doesn't know, but he should go through these scenarios and the result is either um by right or by special permit. I got gotcha. you. By right, he can issue a building permit. Special okay. Permit, it has to come through us first. Great. Sorry, just for my notes, what's the uh, address that we're talking about here? 
59 Shore Drive. So you can um, you can go to the assessor's page and you can go to their mapping system and you can pull this thing up. And there's a couple pictures of what the cottage is now. And you can see the dimensions of the lot. That's that's the sort of research that I do on these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By right, um, special permit. Okay. Want to move on to the third one? Yeah. I mean, commonly, you know, what Hawkins would do in a lot of these cases is he'd say, you need to check in with the ZBA. So then the the, the applicant would come before us for education <clears throat> and guidance. So right. we, we'd do the review, just an entry-level review to determine whether they could go for a building permit or whether they had to come to us. We do that at the meeting under that education and guidance and, yeah, because uh, this seems like it's sort of late in the process here. You know, these people have applied for a building permit and it's already in the queue, you know. And from what Jeff Goodchen was saying, it might not get eyes at all. You know, it sounds like someone else is reviewing these things and, and you know, putting up, putting them in a, in a queue for review for um, issuance. So. Hmm. All right. 585 Wendell Road. There's a little, um, I don't know, kind of a, uh, looks like 1970s shack on this property. I guess it's a, you know, a little sort of, um, you know, the book Handmade Houses of Woodstock from the 70s. It looks like, <laughs> it looks like one of those, you know, it looks like a little thing that, uh, you know, maybe somebody with some carpentry skills um, put up. The guy's asked for a building permit to put a great big addition on it. And Jim shot him down and said, no, you know, it looks like an accessory apartment. You need, you need to go before the zoning board of appeals. So um, he has already sent um, an email to Carrie saying, Hey, is there any way to appeal this guy's decision that, you know, this is an accessory apartment. It's not an accessory apartment. It's just a great big addition. Um, so I don't know whether to sort of get at what level do I get involved in this or at what point? Well, um, remember that we are the zoning board of appeals. <laughs> so if the owner didn't like the building inspector's determination, they appeal it to us. Yep. us. He appeals it, but there's an appeal process, right? So he, he needs to go through that. Yes. And, okay. and we've in my tenure on the ZBA, we've only done one of these. Okay. And we overturned the building inspector. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, the applicant could do something like that if they want to go through that whole process with the hearing and everything else. Or um, they could just apply to us directly. Right. Okay. I'll... Um communicate with the owner by email then. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else? Oh, Tom's got his hand up. Hi, is it okay if I speak now or? Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot, okay. Um, two unrelated questions. One, I didn't know I had until this meeting just happened now because it was in your unanticipated business, but can you just confirm for me who is on the ZBA at the moment? It's a little confusing from online and whatnot. Please. The um, web, page, web page just never gets updated. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a, a full member and um, am acting as the chair. Uh, John Airstuck is a full member appointed by the board, you know, select board. And Jeff is an alternate member um and you know coming in if we need him which I obviously see. we we don't it it takes three people to to um and we need a unanimous decision on anything that we vote on and it takes three people to do that so okay thanks um and so you're looking for another full member and yeah. another and is yeah. there also room for another alternate member 
Or, I mean, there's also room for another alternate. Member, I thought yeah. there might be two alternates yep. and three regulars. Is that right? So that way, if somebody can't come, or if somebody has a you know conflict of interest or whatever, you know, you have a sort of a pool you can draw from. Yeah, it, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'm an associate member in the planning board, so I understand what the okay. alternates yep. are. Um, yep. Thank you. That's just been a little bit confusing, and y'all don't need very much. So this was an opportunity to ask. Um, directly. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I don't know if it's relevant or if you're aware that a 59 Shore Drive has been actively in front of the Conservation Commission for about, a, I don't know, six months or a year, and I believe it's already demolished. Um, yeah. but, uh, I just didn't know if it was relevant or if you wanted to know more, if you walked by. Uh, I, I, I do. I live very oh, there's by and, there's uh, not a lot of... Um... You know, in, in Amherst, when I worked there, all of those departments are in, they're located in the same place in town hall. So you, you, you know, and we used to meet and talk about what about this property and what about that property and who's, oh yeah, we're, we're working on that property. That's not happening here in Shootsbury. You know, I wondered about this uh, place it's at 17 Leverett Road. Did they, did the board of health review the septic on that? You know, I see. adding uh -huh. a couple of bedrooms. Yeah. Um, we're not supposed to issue a site plan review on an accessory apartment until after the Board of Health has has reviewed and determined right. that that there's enough uh, land area there for a well and a septic system. Sure, right. sure. Um, and, yeah. and actually, the, the septic when you add bedrooms, you know, you you need to have an engineer say that the septic system you have is adequate. And um, <clears throat> I don't know whether <clears throat> that's so. Uh -huh. Well, I, I just I don't know. I, just because I follow a lot of different boards. I, when that yeah. address was said, I was like, wait, and I, I just look now at the ConCom and it's about a year. The last thing was in June of 24 that that property came up with the ConCom. So, okay, thank you. Um, anyhow. I, a relative to 59 Shore Drive, I believe this has been before us before for something or other. And I think I may have files on it in my ZBA collection of stuff. I'm gonna go back and look. And uh, I, I think they approached at one point and maybe one of us went out and looked or something. I, I, I think it came before us maybe for education and guidance at one point a few years ago. So I'll look at my files. Thank you. And uh, see what's there. Would you also be willing to put the stuff that's on your hard drive on a thumb drive and and get that to me at some point yeah that'd, that'd be helpful okay um yeah yeah files to jct okay you got when it when you do a um you know a, a special permit or uh, th those those forms that we use there, it looks like it's the same form every time. Is that, do you have an electronic copy of that? How are you filling that out? Um, oh, when I write the permit? Oh, I have a, I have a template. You do, okay. Yep. That'd be helpful to have as well. So I don't have to recreate that. I asked Carrie mm -hmm. about it and she didn't think there was one. Yeah. And um, John, one thing that, I'm willing to do for you guys because I've been doing it for for years. Is I can write your permits if you'd like. Yeah. Um. You know, once even if I haven't been part of the decision making process, I don't think there's anything that's stopping me from actually writing the permit. Okay. Um. It just the the chair shouldn't have to write the permits too. I mean, you have enough to do. Well, this is a lot like a full time job for me, and I'm, but I don't get paid now. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, we, I guess the last piece of unanticipated business that I can share with you is I sat in on an interview for um, a fellow who applied for Carrie's position um, last week with um, Nathan Murphy from the planning board and Beth Wilson from the CONCOM and nice enough guy. Um, he's a, uh, um, a reporter and a writer. He's a published author. Um, no real experience on any of these kind of boards. So, you know, he, 
there'll be there'll be quite a um, ramp up period for him to come up to yeah. speed. But I think they're going to offer him the job. I mean, we didn't any of us have any reason not to offer it to him. And since we don't have any other applicants, um, you know, sure, go ahead. You know, this is getting to be, you know, Linda Avis Scott, of course, was the gold standard yeah. in all this. And and then we've we've sort of it's been hard to retain these folks. And um I, I recently was consulting to Sh Charlemont. Yes. Over there, um they have a, what the person called secretary to the boards. And she mm -hmm. does, I think, everything that Carrie did, plus the select board. Wow. But and it's, it's a full-time really, job. It, it's more of a job. It's like yeah. something that someone could actually stick with and, and uh, make a decent amount of money. Right. And I think what we've done with the land use clerk is just make it not enough of a job to hold yeah. on to anybody for very long. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if, if Town Hall would ever listen to any of that but i think if they made it one good job for somebody they'd hang out for longer well i can tell you that sort of the history of linda what is this she was doing that job for the conservation commission and i was on a member of the zba and clerking for the zba and um it got to be too much for me because I was, you know, I took this job in Amherst. So now I, I wasn't self-employed. I couldn't sort of make time, you know, in anywhere in the day to do this stuff. And I said to Chuck, you know, why don't we get Linda? She already knows how to do a lot of this stuff. And so that was the sort of trigger. And then, oh yeah, you know, we should get Linda. And then the planning board, you know, <laughs> got her too. I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's very difficult to be a member on one of these volunteer boards and also have, you know, an, a, a position as as an administrator. Um, yeah, you, you can't really listen to the case and make an informed decision when you're trying to keep the minutes straight, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know, John, you know. You might want to keep that idea in mind you know the, yeah. a a, a um, clerk to the boards right uh, and and include that select board because they have they have one of their own now it's uh that's right which was linda's last job before she moved away yeah um but somehow in charlemont they make it all work with one person that's wow. pretty cool that's pretty cool i mean they maybe have less you know before them um i think in shootsbury the the was we talked to this applicant about the concoms, you know, a pretty big commitment. There's there's a lot of little permits that happen because, you know, the stuff at the lake, um, you know, that's everything down there needs a, a hard look. So um, they figured that 60% of his time would be spent on conservation commission stuff and, you know, uh, planning board once a month, and then when a big case comes in, you know, one of these um, solar cases or something, then that becomes a much bigger job. And then, and then us, you know, we just happen when we happen. And sometimes there's nothing, and sometimes there's three or four things at once. And yeah. Well, All right. the, this was whatever they do, I I hope they can. I mean, I mean, this guy from Wendell sounds like he's got so many things going that. Uh, oh, he's from Warwick. Warwick, okay. Um, he he's so the the newspaper that he was writing for i think as is called the reminder i guess um they're like going out of business so you know his, his job sort of went away and um he's he's thinking he's approaching this as something that he might do for five years and you know at that point we have to I'd, I'd be happy if somebody hang out for five years that's what we said <laughs> it'd be great <laughs> <laughs> sign you up yeah, exactly. Thank you uh, all for uh, being available for this. All right. Well, it's good seeing you guys. And, uh, you know, if you're in the neighborhood, you can attend a Conway Planning Board meeting sometime. Ooh, fun. <laughs> I'll, I'll close the meeting at 11. Can, can I, John, can I just insert one thing before you do that? Do, do yes. Given that we are 
looking at at least the 17 uh, Leverett Road uh, property for a, um, you know, for some kind of authorization, do, do we need to set a meeting date and a, another time for the, for getting together on that or? Not yet. I mean, I think they need to uh, submit an application. So we wait for that to happen. Okay. Okay. No. Yeah. So okay. we'll close the meeting at 1149. Thank you. Okay. okay. Great to see you all again. Thank you. You too, guys. Take care. Back in town soon. Bye -bye. All right. See you. Bye-bye.